شعت شموس الهدي بالكلمات فنارت الأفهام بالآيات أسرج بنور العلم عقلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين One of the most important faiths of believers, that faith that shall subsist within them to the end of their life. And in a matter of fact, it should subsist within them to the hereafter, is that of hope and faith in Allah's mercy. There are two verses in the Holy Quran. The first verse describes the difference between well-guided and the astray. It indicates a strong contrast between the belief in Allah's mercy and the despair of Allah's mercy. Allah, be He exalted, says, وَمَنْ يَقْنُطُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّهِ إِلَّا الظَّالُّونَ He says, and who despairs the mercy of his Lord, but the astray. Despairing of Allah's mercy is a sign of astray, and hoping in Allah's mercy is a sign of guidance. The second verse describes the difference between a religious believer and a non-religious disbeliever. The believer hopes in Allah's mercy and the disbeliever or kafir despairs of Allah's mercy. Allah be he exalted says, وَلَا تَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Never give up hope in Allah's mercy. Certainly no one despairs Allah's mercy except the one who disbelieve. وَلَا تَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ Never give up hope in Allah's mercy. الروح, mercy, and rahma, which is also mercy, have the same meaning. Therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَيْأَسُ Never give up. Some scholars say that it has been described as ruh because when one is in an issue, they feel suffocated. It's like they can't breathe. This is similar to the case of people who live life with asthma. They can't breathe often and they crave from, for fresh air in order for them to breathe well. When they inhale some fresh air, they feel that their souls has come back to them. That fresh air or breeze is called ruh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be he exalted says, Never give up hope on Allah's ruh. وَلَا تَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ The believer should never give up hope in Allah's mercy under any circumstances. Why? Why is there a difference between a mu'min or believer and a kafir disbeliever? The difference is because the disbeliever believes in the logic of science and the believer believes in the logic of power of religion. There is contradiction between the logic of science and that of religion. The logic of religion does not neglect the logic of science, whereas that of science to some scientists most often does. The logic of religion is a step higher than the logic of science. Science depends on physical equations. It's like keeping someone in a locked room. He or she can't see what's behind the walls. But his heart or her heart or soul are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be exalted. And in any situation you are in, in any circumstances you are in, your heart is connected to Allah has mercy. Science says that there is no hope. The physical equations say that there is no hope. However, religion says that there is hope. There is this munajat for Imam Ali alayhi salam. Some of you have heard it and some of you have memorized it. It starts with لَكَ الْحَمْدُ يَا ذَا الْجُودِ وَالْعُلَى تَبَارَكْتَ تُعْطِي مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَمْنَعُ إِلَهِي وَخَلَّاقِي وَحِرْزِي وَمَوْئِلِي إِلَيْكَ يَدَ الْإِعْصَارِ وَلْيُسْرِعِ أَفْزَعُ And with some adapted translations, it reads as All praise to you, Allah, the Exalted, 
You grant your bounties to whomever you want and withhold these from whoever you decide. O oh Allah, my creator, my fortness and my refuge, to you I resort in ups and ace down for relief. Until he says this, and this is very important that we carry this belief to the akhirah, to the hereafter. He says, Ilahi, لَإِنْ عَذَّبْتَنِي أَلْفَ حُجَّةٍ If you, Allah, put me in torture and hell for years, regardless whether those years count as per the scale of the years of the world or the akhirah. So if Allah tortured this believer, what would the believer do in response? فَحَبْلُوا رَجَائِي مِنْ كَلَا يَتَقَطَّعُوا My hope in you will nonetheless be severed. What's more sublime and elated, an expression of a believer's faithfulnesses than the expression of a believer's submissiveness to his Lord, the merciful. That's why in Dua Kumail ibn Ziyad, which is also narrated by Imam Ali alayhi salam, we say, I swear that if you allow my power of speech to be retained by me in hell, I shall amongst its intimate cry out, bewailing to those who cry with faith and kindness and have compassion and mercy in you. That's why the hadith or the narration say that keeping your hope and faith in Allah has mercy even when you are dying is required. It's very important to have faith and hope in Allah has mercy, which is one of the rescue means in Akhirah. Anyways, us as human beings, we have problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be he exalted, has created this world and has made us swarm through problems. And every one of us suffer from a different problem. Let me give you an example of a man and a woman who got married. They lived with each other for about eight years. And throughout that eight years, they did not have any children. They went to the doctor to be cured. And after eight years of going to the doctor, the doctor told them there is no hope. The problem is in the man and is in the woman. So don't try anymore. This is the logic of science. What does it say? There is no hope. But the logic of religion says there is hope. This very couple went to one of the scholars and he gave them some of qand. You know what qand is? It's the sugar cubes that we read hadith al-kisa on. And the scholar also gave those couple turbat from Sayyid al-Shuhada, the sand from the holy land of Karbala, from Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And the water of Zamzam, the holy spring water of Mecca, along with some of the water that's drained near our master, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas After a while, that lady gave birth to triplets. There's another story. A couple who was married for 28 years. Now 28 years is a long span, right? However, after 28 years without having children, Allah be exalted, bless them with four babies all at once. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Verily, when he intends a thing, his command is be and it is. The doctors say that there is no hope. The politicians say that there is no hope in politics. The economics say that there is no hope regarding certain economical issues. But the logic of religion says that there is hope about everything. Here's another marvelous situation. A hundred-year-old man and a 90-year-old wife had no children. Would there still be possible for them, for those two couples to get any children? Is, there, is it possible? The logic of science says that there is no hope. But what does the logic of religion say? There is hope. The soul of a pious person always entertains hope. إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيًّا He called upon his Lord in humility and privacy. Why privately? He felt shy to ask his Lord for a child after Zakaria turning a hundred years old. But it's not shameful to ask anything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
everything is possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not need to say kun, be. The letters be, Allah doesn't need to say them. فَهِيَا بِمَشِيئَتِكَ دُونَ قَوْلِكَ مُؤْتَمَرًا وَبِإِرَادَتِكَ دُونَ نَهِيكَ مُنْزَجِرًا Allah doesn't need to say kun for it to be. Allah's will will do everything. Allah is not controlled by this observance. Allah is not limited to these natural equations. It is we who are limited to these natural equations. That private call upon Zakaria in humility and his Lord had a result. Zakaria who had been a hundred years old and his wife was 90 years old. Allah blessed him. Not only with a child, but rather a messenger. The Holy Quran says, Ya Zakaria, inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin ismahu Yahya. O Zakaria, we gave you the good news. His name shall be Yahya. No one was named by his name before. Therefore, you, us, we must never give up hope in Allah's mercy in any situation. When you ask Allah for something, ask with a soul of a believer that believes that what they ask for will be answered. One last important point. We pray and ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we forget for other people's problems to be solved. We mistakenly forget about our relatives, our friends, family. It is because People, when they live in their problem, they only think about their problem. And others sublime other people's problems and pray for them too. Our role model, Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam the woman of the world, peace and blessings be upon her, used to pray for everyone except herself. It's very important then to pray for others. As people all around the world are living with problems, when we read Dua Nudba, we realize that when we talk to Imam Al Mahdi, we don't tell him to come out to solve my little problem that I'm living in. We rather realize a different and more sublime purpose here. Where is the one prepared for cutting off the roots of the wrongers? Where is the one awaited for mending every unevenness and crookedness? Where is the one? hoped for removing oppression and aggression. You realize here that we're asking Imam al-Mahdi to come out to solve oppression and aggression, not to come out to remove my little problem that I'm suffering from. If you realize in about 90 to 100 words, in this dua, we are asking Imam al-Mahdi to come out to solve bigger problems that we live in today. Now back to track. If the doctors say that there is no hope, the believer, the mu'min, should always entertain hope. It's narrated that Sayyid Hassan al-Shirazi, may Allah bless his soul, was led to an execution in Iraq. He was asked, do you have a will? This was an execution norm then. The executors would take the will and they would bring a black cloth and cover the sentenced person's face or they would just cover the eyes and then they would blow three whistles. After the three whistles, they would remove the chair beneath the prisoner's foot or shoot them to death with a gun. So Sayyid Hassan al-Shirazi, they took his will and he was standing on the chair. He says they blew the first whistle and the second whistle. He says between the second whistle and the third whistle, how many seconds are there? Maybe a fraction of a second. He said in that fraction of a second, the phone rang. He does not hear what the man in the phone was saying, but he hears what the man in front of him was saying. He said no, meaning no, I have not executed him yet. It's been delayed, it's delayed. They came and they took that black cloth away from him and they said, your execution has been delayed. Imagine between the second whistle and the third whistle, he still had hope in Allah's mercy. And I will conclude with one last story narrated that the last person that will be taken to hell will look behind him. 
Allah be exalted will ask him, Abdi lima al-tafat, why did you look back? فيقول العبد يا رب ما كان هذا ظني بك He would say, oh Lord, I had hope and mercy in you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, what was your hope and mercy in me? He would say that you would take me to paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at the angels and he would say that this man had never had hope in me, not even once in his life. And if this man had hope in me, I would have never even dragged him or took him to hell. But I would accept his fijin lie and I would take him to heaven. That's why in Dua Kumail when we read, it says, أَتُسَلَّطُ النَّارَ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهٍ خَرَّتْ لِعَظَمَتِكَ سَاجِدَ Would you allow the hell of overpower the faces of those who have fallen down in prostration before you? Let's heartily pray that we have faith and hope in Allah's mercy. Wherever we go and whatever happens to us, we will never lose this hope in Allah's mercy. وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين إحدى الأشياء المهمة في لحظات الاحتضار أنه قلب المؤمن يكون مشحون ومليء بالأمل بالله هذا من أسباب النجاة في الآخرة